Uh, my name is Peter Modell, and I come to the Electric Universe because of my lifelong fascination with astronomy. I followed many developments in, astronom in astronomy and was particularly connected with the developments of Holt and Arp, and that brought me into the Electric Universe, and I was delighted to find this uh, this assembly of people who are who have interests in the same direction. Holton Arp was the astronomer in uh, the seventies, at the time of the discovery of the uh, quasars, or sixties. Yes, the discovery of the quasars. He was at the Mount Palomar observatories which were uh, the biggest at that time in Southern California. He was very renowned for his observing uh, abilities and so forth, won many prizes, until the day he started showing that the quasars were related to galaxies, and that there were material trails and statistical uh, placement uh, of, of quasars around galaxies and things like that where there were, oh, more than two dozen different independent proofs of the fact that quasars were actually related to galaxies. Something that till today hasn't been accepted. But as he took photos of these and different uh, uh, proofs of this whole uh, observational fact, he was told uh, that he wouldn't have no more observing time at the telescope if he continued in that direction. And so uh, with that, being a very, a very upright, correct person, he said, all right, if it's this way, I'm leaving. And from that time he left the United States and went to the Max Planck Institute in Germany. The fact that the quasars were related to galaxies made a whole lot of sense to me, and it, it's also an organic view of the world, where quasars are baby galaxies being born and developing in an organic fashion. With the, uh, and the, the fact of the relationships and the change in, in understanding where redshift isn't due exclusively to receding velocity, but actually the majority of redshift is due to something quite different, and it shows the age of the galaxy and not the movement of the galaxy. And so this was a whole field that opened up, that gave a change of perspective on, uh, on, on astronomy in general. And being fascinated with astronomy, spending nights out by the telescope, something like this intrigued me a lot. Very nice question. I, w I wish somebody would answer that. <laughs> yes, it's actually that's the the. It's not. I don't know the answer, and I don't know who does. It actually reverses a whole lot of things. It not only the Big Bang doesn't exist. It changes the no more expanding universe, uh, and all sorts of concepts. It, it, the whole question of uh, the importance of gravity changes, and in the, in the influence of the structure of the universe, and that's where the electric universe comes in to complete the picture. And uh, so it's, it, yes, he shook the whole foundations not only of astronomy, but of physics that goes with this. So there's, there's reason, but who and why they didn't want to listen, that I can't tell you. There you are. <laughs> All right. It's, it's, a, it's fun to play with, because the idea of matter seems so obvious. I mean, what, what can be more clear than the chair I'm sitting on? And suddenly, when you look in and you want to find out, well, what is matter? 
it recedes and it runs away, and there's nothing quite to catch hold of. And what comes out, because you wanted it in one sentence, <laughs> is that matter is actually something we formulate in the mind. And our body's sense organs and our encounter between the physical body and the world is a dialogue, an ongoing dialogue, that is not formed into concepts. And so we don't know what it is. The conceptual mind, the conscious mind, it, it doesn't know it. It's inaccessible to the conscious mind. And so what happens is that it's only when the mind steps in and forms a, con a concept of something that we have a piece of something. Call it matter, if it's a related to the physical body, or mind matter, such as a concept or a, an idea or a thought, if it's just purely in the mind. And so the idea of matter is actually is a self-contained entity, something that has a that has an identity, and it can be an identity that we give in the mind, or that the mind gives in relationship to an experience with the physical world. And so in the end, matter is made, is a product of mind. Ah, that's a different process. Usually, uh, when science, is go science goes in to study matter, what you do is you look for, the, you look for what something's made of. Yeah? So you start going down from one thing to another. From the chair, I look at the wood. From the wood, I look at the cells of the structure of the wood. From the cells of the structure of wood, I come to carbon molecules. From the carbon molecules to atoms, to subatomic particles, and so on it goes until there's nothing. There's nothing to hold on to. There's no final answer. What's a subatomic particle made of? Yes. This, this, this were going out of the realm, of the material realm. And so the scientific view of going to the ever more, ever smaller thing in order to find out the truth, or find, as if, is, is, a, a, is an illusion and a and a mirage. And uh, actually, from the beginning, it's a mirage, because it's, it's as if you thought you were getting closer to something, because the scale is getting smaller. But the scale, the smallness of the scale, has nothing to do with getting to an answer about what an object is, about what the end identity of an object is, or the material of an object. Actually, Objects are formed not from within, which is where, what science was looking for, what's it made of, but actually through a combination of m a multitude of effects. What anything you think of, tell me something, or give me an object. Well, uh, your shirt. All right. What a shirt means to you is many, many things. The dictionary might finish it in a, in a short sentence, but that short sentence only makes sense because for every word in that dictionary, you have an, a, a, in that dictionary definition, you have a, a, a multitude of other explanations to explain it. Because when you think of shirt, then you have to think of clothes. It means wearing things. It means warmth or not warmth. It means fashion. It means a... a the fact that somebody made something, yes, that of of material, of a, a, all a, a, of a, of looking after yourself, yes, which is about life. And if you have life, then it's not life. And there's so so much behind it that's actually in your mind, unconsciously. Sure, not it's not the conscious mind that does that. It's what I call the expanded mind, where you have a multiple multiple, uh, I wouldn't call, call it information, it's pre-information that's present there, and that actually colors, and more than colors, it, it gives meaning to the object that, that comes 
at the moment when you, when you say shirt. So when you think shirt or see shirt, that meaning, all those things came together out of consciousness. There was a moment of integration. And then, whoop, you have the object, shirt. Aha, <laughs> yes. That's, that's an old... Uh, uh, an, an old uh, f- philosophical yeah. riddle, yes. Uh, yes, the, uh, it's the tree in the forest, yes, and things like that. Uh, of course, the answer is, uh, does the tree, do you hear the tree when it falls, in the, uh, when, when you're, nobody's there in the forest or whatever it is, yes? Of course, what forest? Yes, <laughs> what does fall mean? None of these things mean anything until you form a concept of this object. Yes, you have to form the concept of forest, you have to form the concept of tree. And so, a, without the mind forming the concept, we have no idea what actually is going on. And so we only know, again I'm coming back, we're all, we're all, what's accessible is what we've codified into our typical codifications of concepts which fit our understanding today. 